right another video you lucky people this one I'm gonna try I'm, I'm honestly gonna try my best to keep this under 10 minutes I promise so in that vein I'm gonna shut up already um, diodes that's what we're gonna do today diodes these uh, these amazing little things this is what the exam board says uh, understand they're a device that allows current to flow in one direction we'll look at that identify anode and cathode use a diode to protect against back EMF and know how to use a diode to protect against incorrect battery polarity some of those sound straightforward um, we'll do it quite quickly I said I'm going for under 10 minutes if I can do it under 5 um, yeah well I don't know I'll, um, I'll have a beer or something to celebrate diodes are devices used to control the direction of current flow in a circuit what that means is current is electricity, it's electricity flowing. We can use diodes, uh, these little devices, to direct energy where we want it and to make sure it only goes in the direction we want it to. That's really, really, really important. Think of them as one-way valves. Um, you get like a one-way valve in a pump to stop air getting sucked back out. Um, you get one-way streets for cars. The traffic can only flow one direction. That's what these things are like, but with electricity. So they only let energy through from anode to cathode and they're used for this job preventing current flowing the wrong way uh, to stop e a common use is in consumer electronics that have batteries more often than not the end user is a is a thicko your average joe idiot and they put batteries in the wrong way around now that's bad for electronics particularly things like chips uh, microchips integrated circuits so we can use diodes to protect against that i'll show you we can use them to steer energy or steer currents. We can make it do our bidding. So I'll show you a circuit that does that. And we can also use them to prevent this crazy thing called back EMF, which is not really that hard to understand, but I'll show you in some circuits. Okay, so a little bit on the basics of them. Their symbol looks like that. It's the same symbol as an LED, because funnily enough, LED stands for light emitting diode. The only difference is the LED symbol has two arrows. In real life they look like that, about the size of a resistor, black with a silver stripe around one end. Um, anode and cathode, labelled as such. Now, if you look at the symbol for a diode, you'll see there is an arrow in the symbol. The arrow is saying energy can flow in the direction of the arrow, so downwards. If you were energy trying to flow up, you were encountering this flat bit like a wall. So that's what the symbol is, is giving you a clue. Arrow, yes, good this way no wall okay kinda tells you which way it flows so there we go that's what they look like that's the symbol for them energy always flows anode to cathode um, right ignore those questions I have time for some circuits now to show you what I mean so how are we doing for time Bosch three minutes five left I'm doing oh no seven left I'm doing well alright two circuits here one of them will work and one of them won't um, you can pause the video and guess which one if you care otherwise you can just let me do the thinking for you. Uh, if I press play, it's obvious. The top one works, the bottom one doesn't. And the reason for that is because of the diode. In the top circuit, the positive of the battery, the anode if you like, is flowing into the anode of the diode, out the cathode, in the direction of our little arrow, so it can flow through the resistor, through the LED, which is a diode itself, and back to the battery, making a circuit. In this lower circuit, I've been Mr. Joe Idiot and I put the battery around the wrong way. The plus is now on the bottom. Um, there are two reasons why this won't work. One of them is our good old friend the diode here. Energy would come all the way around, get as far as here and it encounters a brick wall. If you like a block, it can't go any further. There is no complete circuit, nothing happens. Um, the more observant among you will have noticed that the LED itself is actually a diode. So in real life the current can't actually flow any further than that point there, okay? So we can see that. Um, same in this circuit, all right? Flowing, no flow, all right? So that's really good practice. If you're building a circuit, um, I don't often get my students to do this because there's other issues with diodes. They actually have what's called a voltage drop. Um, so in your circuits, it would cause other problems, like as in if you stuck a five volt battery on it, you would actually only end up with about four volts afterwards. So I'll show you what I mean. Got nine volts there we've got 8.3 volts there the diode actually drops the voltage and that would make your circuits it make your LEDs less bright and things like that 
Um, but in consumer electronics, where they designed that out, they would nearly always put a diode there to stop someone putting the battery around the wrong way to prevent idiots. Okay, I'm sure you've met an idiot. You probably know a few. Um, just look around your classmates. You'll know who I'm talking about. There you go. That's the first thing the exam board wants you to know. Put a diode near the battery. Done. Next topic. Diodes to steer current. How are we doing for time? Oh, yeah, loads of time. Good. Um, you may remember this circuit if you've done decade counters with me. This is my good old 555 timer decade counter. Turn the numbers into a dice. So if I hold down my button, 3, 4, 5, 6, it displays the numbers as per the dots on a dice. And obviously I could speed that up if I wanted to, but I've slowed it down to uh, to show you the effect. Now what we're doing here is we're using diodes, particularly these 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9 of them here, to direct energy. If I look at current flow here, as I cycle through my outputs, you'll notice the ones that go red. So I'm getting my pulses coming into the decade counter. Every time it gets a pulse, the next one lights up. Only one channel is lit at any one time. However, um, I need it to operate certain LEDs under certain situations. So like the third output, I'd obviously want to display the number three. However, the number three actually shares two LEDs with uh, the number four. But when the number four's lit up, I don't want that middle one lit up, because otherwise I'd be displaying a number five. And it's a bit hard to explain, and I don't want to go into all the logistics of it, but what I'm doing is basically when one particular output is on, I'm using the diodes to say, yes, you can go this way, you can go down here, oh, hello, what have I done? Um, you can go down here, you can turn on this transistor and that transistor and that one to make a number five, but you can't come back up here and you can't go back in the chip because that would cause carnage and you can't go back up there and you can't go back up there. But those wires needed to be there for when I needed to display a number one or a number six or whatever. So this is what I meant by steering it. We're using diodes to steer energy where we want it to go. All right, just to show you that again, just watch all the different paths that go red as I cycle through the numbers. Okay, I'll leave that running a few times. So that's steering with diodes. Easy. Final use, back EMF. Right, this stands for back electromotive force. It's actually nothing very crazy. It's quite easy to understand um, if you have a basic grasp of physics. How are we doing for time? Seven minutes, two minutes to get this done. Let's do it. Right, a motor. If you stick a battery on a motor, it spins round. Everybody knows that. However, did you know if you don't, if you just hold a motor and you turn the shaft of the motor with your fingers, you actually make energy. Um, if you were to connect a light bulb to it and could spin it fast enough, you would light that light bulb up. So a motor, if you're turning it, is actually a thing called a generator. Now, a generator makes voltage, like a battery does. Now, when we spin up our motor in this circuit, when we say turn off motor, it doesn't stop immediately. Like anything, it slows down. It kind of spins and gradually comes to a stop with friction. Now, the trouble is, even when you've turned it off, while it's slowing down, it's turning. And as it's turning, with its own weight, if you like, it's actually making electricity. The problem is that electricity is trying to flow the wrong way around the circuit. It's trying to be pulled up through the transistor. Now, what happens is it's basically trying to flow in a loop like this and drag a voltage up through the transistor. Now, obviously, that's bad for the transistor. Transistors only let energy through this way. And we don't want that to happen. It will damage it. So by putting a diode in parallel with the motor like this, the diode acts to block that energy that happens when the motor is doing its slowdown thing and it prevents what's called back EMF. Okay, now we do have time. 50 seconds, very, very quickly. I'm nearly there. You get the same phenomenon with relays, okay? Relays, um, when you put energy into them, there is a coil. The coil becomes magnetized, makes a magnetic field. When you turn them off, that magnetic field collapses, but guess what? It turns back into a voltage that wants to flow the wrong way. So basically, if you've got a motor or a relay, put a diode around it to protect against back EMF. I've got 30 seconds, so I can sum it up. There we go. Diodes, one-way devices. They have an anode and a cathode. They look a bit like that. There we go. You can use them to protect against back EMF as per the circuit. Tick-tock. I'm done. I've done a video under 10 minutes. I'm going to go celebrate.
Have a nice day. Bye.